Let's say this together. Ready? Go. This is my Bible. It is God speaking to me. I am who it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. I can have what it says I can have. So I open my heart today to hear God speak a word that will change my life forever. Amen. I heard someone jump into the have what it says I can have part first. Ah, hey, I like it. You're ready to receive. <laughs> Without faith, it is impossible to please God. So you are doing right. You are in the right place. Ready to receive from the Lord. Can you open to two places, please? Proverbs 4. Proverbs 4 in the Old Testament. And Galatians 6 in the New. Proverbs 4. And Galatians 6. You know why I ask you to turn in your Bibles? So you don't have to just take my word for stuff. That you can see, oh, look at that. God actually said that. This Bible that, that no one could have written and had everything square and line up. All the prophecies come to pass ahead of time. Because remember, we don't know the future without the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. And so... I get your eyes on this so you can have confidence that what the Lord is saying is for you. Oh, was anyone here last week to hear the word? Was that powerful? Come on. Walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Amen. We are discovering, learning together how to walk in the spirit, aren't we? And it's going to be helpful for us, isn't it? Yes. I'm asking you these leading questions, so you know it's okay to participate. You can talk to me. So we are in the series, if you're taking notes, Walk in the Spirit. Say, Walk in the Spirit. Now this message is called So to the Spirit. S-O-W. So, like the law of sowing and reaping, right? When you sow seeds in a garden, and then they come up. Sow seed in a field, it comes up. Amen. Galatians 5. I brought my Bible up here because sometimes I use it, but most of the time I use the iPad. Is that going to be okay? Is that going to throw anybody off? Are we okay? You still receive from the Word that's copied and pasted from Bible Gateway? All right. Galatians 5, 16 to 25. We're going to do this kind of all throughout the service. I'm going to speak a little of the Word, and I'm going to break it down. I'm going to come right back to it, and I'm going to break that down. All right? I say then walk in the Spirit... And you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So remember, it's not trying to avoid the lust of the flesh. It's trying to pursue walking in the Spirit. So the things that I'm setting my mind on are walking in the Spirit. I'm setting my mind on things above, not on earthly things. For I died, and my life is now hidden with Christ in God. Amen? We're seated in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Praise the Lord. So here at The Rock, in this series and in this move of God, this end time move, this revival that we're in, and we are in a revival, and we will be revived if we allow ourselves to be. Amen? Amen. Amen. And if you share this word with others, they will be revived and refreshed as well. Do you see the power you have? Oh, you are powerful and mighty in God. Amen. So we are calling you to start being who you are called to be. You are called to be promoted to the highest places, raised up and seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Amen. Seated at the right hand of the Father in heaven. Somehow, in the Spirit, it's a reality. We are so close. Amen. Having authority over all the power of the enemy. Do you believe it's true? Yes, we do. With the sword of the Spirit and all the armaments of the Spirit, breastplate, righteousness, feet shod, the gospel, the preparation, peace. I don't know why I wiggle my foot at you, Cheryl. But my feet are prepared, I guess. Anyway, so this is all true, isn't it? If the Word of God says this is true, and this is true for you, then that means it's true, and it's true for you. Remember the children of Israel walking around, and like, yeah, no, the promised land is good. It's, as, it's every bit as good as God said. We can't have it, but it's every bit as good as he said. Those are the ten spies that we don't 
follow after. There were two, thank God, spies that believe God and say, oh, it is every bit as good as God said, and it's for us right now. Let's go, let's go, let's go. If God's with us, we're going to take this land. We are the two spies. We are that club. Amen? So now that you're different, start believing that you're different, that God makes a distinction between you and others who are not you, who are not in the family of God, who are not in this covenant relationship, who are not tied in so close with him. He makes a distinction, and he's totally okay with it. He said, how else are they going to know? Unless you start behaving, you start living like you are different. You start receiving all of these promises that I'm giving to you that you live above only and never beneath. And you start operating as the head and not the tail. No one's wagging you around. No, the head. Where do the decisions come from? The head. No, I'm calling the shots around here. Amen? Now, of course, I mean that appropriately. You know, don't just barge into work and be like, check it out. I mean, unless you're the owner or something, you know what I mean? And then maybe still have more grace. <laughs> check it out. Is that more gracious? It's cooler. It's definitely cooler. All right. So you are not who you used to be now that you're in Christ. Is that true? You're a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. I am a spirit. I have a soul. I live in a body. Now I've got to wrestle with these things. But the real me is the spirit me made alive in Jesus. Amen. Amen. So embrace this truth to be able to walk in it. And when you walk in the Spirit, you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. That's like a double whammy. You get blessed on both sides of that thing. I'm getting the good, and I'm also not getting the bad. That's great. That's great news. All right. Imagine you have two pitchers of water. I had pitchers last time, but we're not going to do it. We're not going to pour the water out all over the place this time. Imagine in your minds two pitchers of water, okay? Now, if my buddy Bill was here, Bill, if you're watching from wherever you are in the world, we love you, miss you. Did you, let me, by the way, before we get to all this, Bill and his wife in uh, Thailand, they have fields, groves of stuff that they, they grow and sell, and nobody else because they're not Christian, nobody else is yielding the fruit that she's yielding. So she lives there full-time. He, he mostly lives there full-time. He's, he's popping around to do business in different parts of the world. But everyone asks the question, what are you doing? It's the Lord. It's the favor and the blessing of God on her fields. She ha- Did she say limes that are like this big? Like it's crazy the size of these limes. YouTube is right there, by the way. So I'm telling everybody that's watching in, limes like this big. So, and, and just everything. And, and she produces so much more volume. You know, not just size, but bushels or whatever she measuring. Like, and so people are coming to her asking for loans and things like that, right? You're not to be the borrower. You're meant to be the lender. This is all Bible I'm talking to you. And this is really happening. Why? Because they live as godly people walking in the Spirit. Amen. Amen. Okay, so you have two pitchers of water. I don't know how you how even thought of that, but I think of just maybe watering a garden and it came up. But praise you, Holy Spirit, for giving me the illustrations that we need to hear and the testimonies that we need to hear to be convinced that you are so good. So, I am a spirit. We learn that in level four, don't we? I'm a spirit. I have a soul. I live in a body. When, when Paul says, I'm about to put off this tent, right? And he's talking about his body. But he, he's not dying. He lives forever. Isn't that right? Because he's a spirit. His spirit is eternal. Made alive with God. So now Paul's spirit is in a different place, but he just puts off the tent, puts off the body. All right? So if there's one thing that we should be least concerned about, it's the flesh. It's the body. So to the Spirit. There's two pictures of water. So there's the Holy Spirit, your Spirit, okay? And now imagine there's a big jug in the middle, and I pour them both in. 
Okay, ready? Now they're both poured in. Now, try to get try to get your spirit out of there. Only your spirit and put it back into your spirit jug. Can you do it? No. One spirit together. As if we're combined. And now we're living this life together. The Holy Spirit and your spirit mixed up. We're one spirit with him. Isn't that good? Have you ever thought about it that way? That's a pretty good illustration, isn't it? Yeah. Thank you, Pastor Jerry. The Holy Spirit and our spirit are mixed together. That's a beautiful mixture. That's a beautiful mixture. Look at verse 17. For the flesh lusts against the spirit. That sounds disgusting, doesn't it? Doesn't it just sound awful? It sounds dirty. So already we know we're on a bad we're on a bad track. The flesh lusts against the spirit. It wants what the spirit has. It wants all of that authority. But now that I am crucified with Christ and no longer live, right? It's Christ who's living in me. The life I live in the body, I live for the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. The flesh is lusting against the spirit, and my spirit has to say, no, no, we're not going to do that. Come over here. If your flesh is pulling on you, say, you know what we're going to do? We're going to go to the word. We're going to go to prayer. We're going to go tap into a message. We're going to jump on YouTube. We're going to find out what God is saying. And by when I say YouTube, I mean, you know, go find The Rock. Find Pastor Robert Morris. Find Pastor Jack Hayford. Somebody who you can trust and believe speaking the uncompromised word to you. Amen. The flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another so that you do not do the things that you wish. So you do not do the things that you wish. You don't do the things that you wish. Wait, if I wish to do it, I'm going to do it. Not necessarily. Who are we talking about? We're talking about the new you, right? So you do not do the things that you wish. Picture it. Let's say I want to go, I don't know, it's even hard to say, get drunk. It's hard. I, I don't have a taste for this stuff, so I don't, I don't get it. But let's say that my flesh wants that. God knows why. Ugh. That's even probably a, the wrong phrase, too. God doesn't know why. <laughs> All right. So say I want to go get drunk in my flesh, but my spirit is like, no, you don't. You do not want that. Be not drunk with wine but be filled with the Holy Spirit. Okay, so the me and the other me. The old me may want to get drunk. The new me is like, buddy, no, you don't, right? The new me may want to go to a gentleman's club where all the fancy gentlemen go. I'll tell you what, it's not a place for gentlemen. Amen? Ladies, I'm trying to preach to you. <laughs> Amen. Man, like you, like you got to care about this stuff. You got to throw you a bone. All right. So, but the new me says, no, you don't. That's just sin, sin, sin. It's death, death, death. It's not for you. Amen. You don't do the things that you want to do. It can go both ways. Who's in charge? The flesh you or the spirit you? Oh, you say, you say now in church, right? At 10 to 11 on a Sunday, when we're all together, believing the same thing, loving on each other, encouraging each other, when it's easy, we're led by the spirit. Yeah, you are. Now, what about the other time? Right? Let's talk about the other time. When you're led by something else. Led by your flesh, your own desires. Isn't that right? That is right. So, you do not do the things that you wish. Look at verse 19. Now, the works of the flesh are evident. So let's break it down a little bit. 
adultery. Do I have to describe all of these or explain them? I don't? Okay. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness. Oh, God, we got that one in there. Revelries and the like, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Does this make anybody nervous? And you don't have to raise your hand or anything. Does it make you nervous that drunkenness is in there with like adultery or sorcery or murder? Does this make anybody nervous? I'm a little nervous about this, right? The Lord is trying to paint a picture. And the thing is, he doesn't even stop. He says, and the like. He's like, you know what it is. You know what you do, right? You know what's not right. It's like that. Okay. It's like this and like that and like this. And uh, anybody? Thank you. Got a couple. So, okay. So let's imagine this. You have a forthcoming inheritance, right? So when somebody passes on, there's going to be an inheritance left for you. Right on. Great. But you don't act like you're part of the family. You don't participate in this relationship. You don't come round, right? You are not available. Oh, I got this inheritance coming. Do you? Do you? Those who practice such things... This disengagement from the Spirit, this engagement in the flesh, those who practice such things, what? Will not inherit. There it is. Will not inherit. I thought I was so clever coming up with this inheritance thing, and there it was right in the text. <laughs> will not inherit. Will not inherit. Say, will not inherit. Do you want to inherit the kingdom of God? Yes, we do. Oh, man, if there's anything that we need, even if life was doomed to be miserable on earth, which it's not, we should still get that one. Lord, we need you. We need your salvation. Save us from our sins. Save me from my sin. And take me to heaven with you. To be with you there. Amen. Okay, here's, here's another one. The lottery's growing. Isn't that right? It's coming up. Caesar, you know. I, I always know. Bing tells me. Anyone on the internet say, hey, the lotto's growing. That's the worst time to play because now everybody else is thinking about it. You play when it's like, no, it's kidding, don't play. Um, you three three $300 million winner, right? Winner, 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 winner. But then you're still walking around in the same old, <laughs> like Jonathan was walking around the other day. He was so excited. His pants have busted up. It, the whole left leg was torn out, like right there, from like here. And it was just and it was flopping, hanging there. Okay, now, let's say it was me, and we can all agree, this is not fashion. I know there are some things that we see, it's like, oh, that's fashion. This is not fashion. But if I come in here with right here, rip down to there, and I tell you, oh, I've won $300 million, like... A minute ago? Because if it's, if it's more than a minute ago, you had time to go shopping and fix this, right? We have a situation here. This is what we're talking about, walking in the Spirit. You are different. You have a different position, a different place. You have benefits now. You have access now. You, you have won the spiritual lottery you have unlimited resources, unlimited access, unlimited power in Christ. Amen? But if you're going to walk around 
with your knees hanging out because your jeans are all ripped up? What's everyone else going to think? You ain't won nothing. Isn't that right? Ain't won nothing. But this is what this is what we can do. We keep it so secondary, so passive. It's like, yeah, yeah, sure, I got it, but I'm not going to use any of it. Are you kidding me? We're meant to walk in the Spirit. Yeah? Not just be told that there's a spiritual difference. Okay. I'm making one up on the spot. Ready? It's very Steve Martin of me. (laughs) My wife loves Steve Martin. Okay. So let's say... Let's say, I'm trying to think of something. Yeah. Let's say I come back into frame on YouTube. (laughs) Thank you, Andrew. All right. Let's say I never compliment my wife's hair. But then I go around telling people, oh, you should see how I lavish my wife with praise and compliments. You should just see. It's unheard of. She's like, you know what it is? (laughs) Right? Unheard of. She never hears it. Okay, let's say I never do that, but I'm out in the world telling everybody, look at what kind of husband I am. Boy, you wish you had what I had. I've got all the right words. She feels so loved and appreciated. What what would I be then? Oh! (laughs) Pastor Jen, telling the truth. A liar, she said. If I wasn't somebody that didn't comp... If I was somebody that didn't compliment her hair all the time. See? But since I do in reality, all right. So, no, no, we, the world should see it. The world should say, look at that guy loving his wife. He's so nice. I'm, I don't want to ruin this. I got to get to it where I planned it. All right. Can we, do we have a picture? I saw a picture on the street the other day, and I had to take a picture of it and bring it in to show you. Because this, this appears to me, someone who's sowing to the Spirit. I know you can't read that, but I'll tell you, it says love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. I don't know why the last one is so big, because it's self-control. Maybe, maybe that person felt the need to just preach to themselves. Maybe. Maybe. This was on the asphalt on a street in front of my house. <laughs> and I'll, I'll tell you here. Now, here's the, here's the best part. Here's the best. And there's like, uh, there's Genesis 1-1. And so on the, on the sidewalk part behind this, if you, if you turn around, you can't. But Genesis 1-1 and John 3-16. And there are other parts of the, of the sidewalk. It's like, In the beginning, God created you, and God loves you and your mom, and all that kind of thing. And that, I think it actually said, God loves your mom and you, but it was, you know how we say your mom. Look, it's not like that. This, I, (laughs) I know what was happening. There was a little sleepover situation happening at the house, and uh, oh, there it is. Like Jesus is speaking. It turned red. Um, uh, but there was a sleepover situation happening, and I, I know the kids in the neighborhood like to get together, and there's like a girl, and all I know is that she uses the word atheist. So I don't know, you know, at 10, 11, 12 years old, what, what these kids know or not know, but no real connection with the Lord, right? Sweetest girl, friend of my daughter's. And what's happening is she's sowing to the Spirit in herself and to this family, saying, listen, God 
loves your mom. He loves you. I'm sure if she was thinking about it, she might have also included this little girl's brother and sister <laughs> and dad. But she's, she was working on something, and it was all over the street. And just took that time when they were all together to get the word out there. That's powerful. That is powerful. And I can imagine this young lady walking into the fullness of the Spirit someday and being able to, if, if not here on earth, and certainly in heaven, and saying, you know what? That Jane Little, i got to find her and give her a hug because she was speaking truth into me, life and hope into me, purpose. Amen? In the beginning, God created you because you were worth creating. Amen. I love it. That wasn't just as a dad talking. I'm, that was, that's true. It's ministering life. And this is just where we are in the, if you want to put verse 22 up, right? But the fruit of the Spirit is what we just read on the sidewalk, or on the asphalt. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, she wrote patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such there is no law. And verse 25 says, If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. So, if this life, this spiritual life is true about you, then let us walk in it also. Let it not just be true about you, let people see it. Amen? Amen? We're talking about sowing to the Spirit. And you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. You shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. It's not like a command. It's like an automatic. You, you do the work of sowing to the Spirit, and I will make sure that, that all this flesh sowing won't happen. That is a great partnership. These, this is just another benefit of being in covenant relationship with the Lord God Almighty. Amen. Galatians 6, verses 7 through 9. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. For he who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption, but he who sows to the Spirit will of the Spirit reap everlasting life. That little move I learned from a buddy of mine named Matthew is called the often cough. You turn the mic off, and then you cough. You're welcome. Do not be deceived. Why is he saying that? Why is he saying do not be deceived? Because we can be deceived. Yeah, someone's always trying to deceive us. That's right. Even if you can't see him. We have an enemy, but we're not ignorant of his devices, right? We know, we know how he's coming, and we know why he comes. The thief only comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But in John 10.10, 10, Jesus said, I have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. You walk in the Spirit. Have life abundantly. And here it says, He who sows to the Spirit will of the Spirit reap everlasting life. So let, let's walk through this doctrinally. Reap everlasting life if you walk in the Spirit. Now wait a second. I thought I had everlasting life when I got saved. You might be thinking to yourselves, and you'd be right. So what is he really saying here? You, like you're going to be like double saved? No. You're already saved. You already get heaven when, when your time comes, right? Okay. So what's he saying? You will reap life everlasting. You already have everlasting life. Think about this life everlasting. Now, all the fullness, this abundant life, you're going to reap that from now on. Amen? As you're still alive here on the earth in the body. Amen? Is anyone excited about this but me? Yes, Lord, I want to reap life. I want to reap this abundance. I want to have, this is, this is my heart. I want to have so much that I can share so much. Amen? You know how it's, I, it's almost as if I would like to never have, to, FPU people, close your ears. I would I'd like to never have to budget again to be able to give generously to someone. Which house do you want? Which car do you want? Which plane do you want? 
Amen? Amen. Listen, don't you rain on my parade. Because I, I, I will get there in faith. Amen? My heart is, is, is pursuing that. That I don't have to have a, an envelope. Right, Brian? An envelope for my generosity. That's right. Cassie's more the envelope person than Brian. We, we've been learning about nerds and free spirits. Nerds unite. <laughs> no, nerds and free spirits unite. All right. Uh, I just love the nerds. What can I say? You're like, we know. All right. So you reap life everlasting. The spirit's lusting against the flesh. The flesh lusting against the spirit. Right? Other way. And for me, I can tell you how true this is on taco night. Because I love tacos. Anybody else love tacos? <laughs> Amen. Come on, we grew up in northern Mexico. We are in the right place. This autentico. Yes. Yes. Give me the give me the stuff. He said, How many tacos do you want? Oh, only one or two. Dozen. That's my flesh. That is my flesh. My spirit knows better. And my spirit is trying to save me. It's like, you know, if you eat all of them, you will pay for it. You will pay for it all night tonight. Your sleep will suffer. And you'll keep on paying for it tomorrow. Who knows I'm telling the truth? Yes. But I just go for it. I just go for it. I'm telling you, I am confessing my sins one to another that I may be healed. Help me, Lord, to sow to my spirit and not to my flesh. <laughs> my flesh is saying, no, sow to me. Don't do it. And let us not grow weary while doing good, verse 9 says. <laughs> let us not grow weary while doing good, for in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. See, sowing to the spirit, sowing to the spirit, the real you. Look, Think about your eyes, not sowing to pornography or lust, those things on TV that you don't even have to pay for. They're just there now because we as a culture have descended so far, haven't we? It was not always like this in my lifetime. And I'm super young. In my spirit. <laughs> uh, laugh it up. See, but what am I? I'm not sowing to that. I'm sowing to my marriage. He who finds a wife finds a good thing. Yes. The Proverbs 31 wife. Amen. Say it again. Not just any old wife. <laughs> A young wife. No, just kidding. To say any old, okay. Just kidding. You're young too. No, we're getting up there, you see. <laughs> John is like, mm. Pastor Caleb would always say, pull up, pull up. He saw me going down. All right. And so, look, but increasingly so. I'm talking bags of seed I'm sowing into my marriage. I used to be somebody who did not know how to send his wife flowers at work. I know. You don't believe it. Oh, I got it all together, huh? No. But I'm learning, and I am just, am I not, Carla? Am I sending my wife flowers at work? But bam. So, thank God. I have witnesses. The truth shall be established by two or three witnesses. Um, Mom, I called you that day. I said, hey, how am I going to get some flowers? Because all I know is that these people are trying to sell me roses at like five, six, seven dollars a pop. I said, U.S. dollars? So we got it all figured out. Flowers do not have to cost five, six, and seven dollars a piece. Amen? Do you like them just as much? 
Oh, <laughs> oh, see that? But you know what? It's a process. You keep where you sow to the Spirit. Sow to the Spirit. That's all I'm saying. But look, sowing to the, to the Spirit. See, but look, we're reaping this sowing to our marriage thing. We sow to the marriage, and, and now, oh, it's so much better than it used to be when I was so selfish. Amen? You could just say it for me. Amen. Yeah, it's better when you're not selfish. Yeah. For all of us. But it's better. And we don't fight. We used to. Yeah. Sorry to bust your bubble. It was true. At the first... We've, we've been married going on 18 years, and they say the first 18 is the hardest. Nah, just kidding. Just kidding. Just kidding. No, for us, though, it was the first seven were not so easy. Am I telling the truth? Man, don't get all excited. Excited because we're on the other side, sowing to our marriage. Praise the Lord. And, and like for my kids, think not sowing to anger, these outbursts of wrath. I got it. I'm actively working to not get it. I'm sowing to the Spirit. And they are appreciating it, whether they realize it or not. My face can just go dark. You know what I'm saying? I go to a dark place, and it's too much. It's too much. I'm coming to terms with that, praying, asking the Lord to help me, and he will. And he is. And it's already going better. Thank you for asking. Yeah. I mean, it's like, I'm not like chasing after him with switches and things. You know, I'm just, but I can, I know me. You know you. You know when your face gives you away. And, and when you bring a kid to tears by just looking at him, see, that's, that's no, mostly, normally too much. We have a couple hair triggers, you know, but most of that's on me. And so the Lord's helping me. Praise God. Is this good news to anybody? That he'll help somebody if you ask him? Amen. Uh, Pastor Ty. Uh, does anyone know Pastor Ty from the Rock in Anaheim? Oh, my gosh. I love Pastor Ty. He's the greatest. Um, he, he, calls, he calls things. He'll just call for an altar call 10 minutes after he starts. <laughs> he is not afraid. I love this guy. And he said, you are called to reap. You are called to reap. And I was like, oh, no. I'm crying, and I run up there, and I'm, I'm receiving from the Lord. And uh, that, was, that was an amazing time. Now, he was talking about souls, reaping souls from death into life, into the kingdom of God, right? Rescuing them from darkness and from an eternity separated from God into hell, right? The whole thing into heaven. Get them into heaven. That's what he was talking about. But it also applies here. Why? Because... Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. Whatever a man sows, that he shall also reap. You have been called to reap, but you've got to sow first. Sowing, then reaping. Whatever a man sows, that he shall also reap. Whatever a woman or a lady sows, that she shall also reap. This is true, and we all know it. Look at Proverbs 4, verse 20. My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. For they are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. Give attention to my words. Look at the Bible. Read it. At the Rock, we read our Bibles every day. You people are fanatics. Okay, but we're free. Amen? But we have life. But we're able to give out of an abundance because we've sown the word in our hearts. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So good in, good out. Garbage in, garbage out. Right? And so the, the primary ways that things get into your heart, the ear gate, the eye gate, and your thoughts. Yeah. What are you thinking about? So that's why we sow to the Spirit. Incline your ear 
to my sayings. Incline. That means your ear is not going to necessarily want to listen to that stuff all the time. But you know what? Say, well, we're going to listen to it anyway because I'm so into the Spirit. Incline your ear. Ah, make it. Make it listen. I put incline in italics just to like give myself a clue. Incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. So now we have the ear gate and the eye gate, right? Keep them in the midst of your heart, for they are life to those who find them. They, they are life. You reap life to those who sow these words into your heart. Isn't that right? Yes, it is. And health to all their flesh. Who likes being sick? Show of hands. Nobody. Who likes being healthy? Yeah, <laughs> two-hander. Yes, amen. They are life to those who find them, to those who sow them, and health to all their flesh. Do you like being healthy in half of your body? 75% of your body? 96% of your body. It's not bad. 100%. If one part suffers, we're all suffering. Isn't that right? You can have a hangnail and it's like, I never touch anything with that finger, but today I'm touching everything. And it's like, zing, zing. Right? And they get you. Because now you're just messed up. Because you got one thing. 100%. Health to all their flesh. Say all. Thank you. Okay, there's been someone who's been pray- sowing to the Spirit and praying and speaking the word over her own life. You see, this is, this is that kind of stuff we're talking about, rebuking the devourer and life and health, right? And I want to show you this is a testimony. Got caught on fire. This girl is on fire, right? Played that earlier. Jennifer, I won't make you come up again. But look, I want to show you this caught on fire. And this is messed up. Yeah? Can't wear this one again. You see what I'm saying? But, but guess what happened to her? Ah, nothing. That's exactly right. Mary Poppins said, nothing is a great word. It can mean anything at all. Nothing. What does that mean? No burns. No burns on me, right? Burns? No burns, right? Why? There's something at work. There's something activated in the spirit realm that's protecting you even physically and health to all your flesh as well. Do you see it? I'm not just making up stories or even making up application. No, it's really true. God does protect us, doesn't he? And something that I practice, instead of all that other stuff not to practice, I practice receiving his protection. I release your angels to go before, you know, cover the kids while they're out, cover us all while we're here, all of it because the Lord wants to. Isn't this a good testimony right here? I mean, it's burned up, but nothing, no mark, no no heat, just nothing perfect. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it spring the issues of life. For out of your heart comes the harvest of what you've been sowing. Out of your heart comes the harvest of what you've sown. Out of your heart. Luke 6.45 says, A good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good, and an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart brings forth evil. For out of the abundance of the heart his mouth speaks. Proverbs 18.21, I was reminded, says, Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And I think it's death first because it's easier to speak death. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Those who love it, those who love it, those who sow will eat its fruit. Speaking the word over your own life from the abundance of what has been sown in your heart produces the life that you wish to live. The life that you wish to live. 
So if you're sowing all this lewdness in your heart, guess what's going to come out? Lewdness. And you're going to walk around doing inappropriate things, saying inappropriate things, wanting to watch, because you're never satisfied. You know, your flesh is never satisfied. Taco night's going to come around again, and guess who's going to want to eat them? This guy. Right? You're never satisfied. So there was, there was um, a, a young adult pastor answering a question about, is it okay to watch movies with sex scenes in them? And he said, I, I see someone right now shaking his head no. Well, let's walk through this a little bit. So, is it okay? And the guy thinks about it for a minute and says, well, you got to check your heart. And you got to see, you know, if you're being, like, tempted, if you're, if you're being drawn, you know, and, and if you are, then it's, not, it's probably not a good idea for you to do that. But if, if you don't get that check, then you're probably okay. What? I don't know who this person is, but this is the wrong answer. If you are being tempted, it's too late. Try to try being tempted. The tacos are served and then walk away from the table. No, just make a few of them, you know, and then I can eat like a reasonable person. You know what I'm saying? It's too late when you're tempted. Here, I've made you six plates. Great. No, no, no. No one's going to walk away. Not if you're me. All right. Uh, I'm going to skip that. Verse 24. Put away from you a deceitful mouth and put perverse lips far from you. Put away a deceitful mouth and put perverse lips far from you. Now, I have grown up reading this verse thinking, this is my own lips. And that's true. You shouldn't have a deceitful mouth. You shouldn't have perverse lips. But it also includes other people. If people are around you speaking a certain way, speaking death around you, perhaps even over your life and your circumstance, put them far from you. How far? Far enough that you can't hear them. Amen? Put them far from you. And so there are some things that we call boundaries, and they're healthy, and they're good, and you can have them, and you can make them, and you can enforce them, and it's all right. Amen? I'm no Dr. Henry Cloud, but I believe in boundaries. Dr. Henry Cloud wrote this book called Boundaries. Uh, Trying to explain some of this, you know, more sophisticated humor. Just kidding. Only $2.99 on Amazon Kindle today. You heard it here, folks. You know what we need to do? Get one of those Amazon associate links and just put it up there. YouTube and get... All right. See, I aired in high school in this way. I let that talk be all around me. I got influenced by it. And then guess what started happening? You can say it. Yes, I did. I started talking like that myself. And so there's a time I had to burst my kid's bubble this week. I'm like, sorry, kids, it's true. Dad used to say those cuss words a lot. And it's embarrassing, right? Because now you're like, ah. But I said, don't make the mistakes I made. Right? Learn from someone else's mistakes. I said, that means that you don't have to make the mistakes in order to learn the valuable, necessary lesson. And so we were at least able to have that conversation. Not that it was good that I did that, right? Right? Should you be cussing at school? No. All right, so don't. Should you be cussing at work? No. Should you be cussing at home when you're by yourself? That's exactly right. No, you shouldn't. Far from you. Put perverse lips far from you. But Romans 8, 28 is true. God causes all things to work together for good to, go, to those who love him and are called according to his purpose. So he's made good come out of this. Not, it shouldn't have been necessary. He could have made this same good come another way. And me not fall. Amen? But thank God that even in our stumbling, he brings us up. So we, we were talking about ears. Let's look at eyes. Get it? Let's look at eyes. Okay. Let's look. It says, verse 25, Let your eyes look straight ahead and your eyelids look right before you. Let your eyes look straight ahead and your eyelids look right before you. 
You know those billboards you pass by? Marketing something? And you know what that something is? I know when we, drive, when we were driving up the hill from Corona, on the left side near the pilot, sorry, I'm not trying to <laughs> entice anybody, but I, there was a place, some unknown place, that there was a billboard, and I knew that that billboard was coming. And even though this one wasn't very revealing or anything, it was like, you know what, though? That's planting a seed. And so I knew it was coming, and it was like stone cold. I'm driving. I'm looking at that dude, looking at these lanes. It's like it doesn't even exist. I, I was like the new Terminator. Back in Terminator 2 days, when the one was made out of steel, you know, or whatever it was. New Terminator. It's been like six since then. All right. Commercials. Things on TV. Anything is bad. That, I went to Home Depot. Nope. Lowe's the other day. And there was a car driving that was had a wrap on the whole thing. And there was something going on on the side of that. I don't know exactly what it is. Why? Because I've now disciplined myself not to engage any of that. It's like, whoop. I saw it happening, but I divert. You see? So into the Spirit. The lamp, Matthew 6, says, the lamp of the body is the eye. If therefore your eye is good, your whole body will be full of light. Come on, that's a good word for somebody right there. Especially someone struggling, looking at some wrong things. What does the scripture say? If therefore your eye is good, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in you is darkness, how great is the darkness? Anyone who's, who's tempted to look at things that they shouldn't look at knows how true that is. Is that right? How great is that darkness? You just feel bad all the time. Isn't that right? Yep. Genesis 3, 6. So when the woman, Eve, saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree desirable to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. She also gave to her husband with her, and he ate. She was told. She knew that it was wrong to do it, but she was looking at it. And that someone was coming out and offering her this fruit, the serpent, the devil. So not only was she enticed, drawn away by her own lust and enticed, but someone was trying to get her on board with this wicked program, right? And, and it's like, hey, I'm going to be wise. I'm going to be like God. That's a good pursuit, isn't it? So compromise. Not good. It's not good. Verse 26, back in, uh, back in our last passage in Galatians. Pro- Proverbs. I should have written that down. Yeah, this looks like a proverb. Ponder the path of your feet and let all your ways be established. Do not turn to the right or to the left. Remove your foot from evil. Remember, Jesus said to pray, lead me not into temptation, but deliver me from evil. Yes? So think about this. If your foot isn't there, remove your foot from evil. If your foot isn't there, guess what else isn't there? The rest of you, your eyes, yeah, all of you. Yeah. And so if you're going to remove your foot from evil, it's like that song, all of me. Why not take all of me? Yeah? Take you to the right place. Take you away from temptation. Take you away from evil. Take all of me away from this thing, not just my eyes. Do you see what I'm talking about? So the Spirit in every way. For the lips of an immoral woman drip honey. Oh, no, wait. I, I skipped ahead. It says, My son, pay attention to my wisdom. Lend your ear to my understanding that you may preserve discretion, and your lips may keep knowledge. For the lips of an immoral woman drip honey, and her mouth is smoother than oil. So you know how you can tell an immoral woman? Dripping honey? <laughs> no. No, no, listen. For the lips of an immoral woman drip honey, and her mouth is smoother than oil. But in the end, she is bitter as wormwood. See, she's talking this stuff to you, trying to get you to come over here and have a little bit of this. Nope. Thank you very much. I'm married. Bye. Yeah? Don't go near her. But in the end, she is bitter as wormwood, sharp as a two-edged sword. Her feet go down to death. Her steps lay hold of hell, lest you ponder her path of life. Let me just tell you the punchline right here. Ponder the path of life. He's just saying her ways are unstable. Just in case you want to start thinking about, well, what could it be? No, no, no. Let me just tell you. 
Her ways are unstable. You do not know them. Don't even think about it. Don't allow your mind to fantasize or just don't go there. Therefore, hear me now, my children, and do not depart from the words of my mouth. Remove your way far from her and do not go near the door of her house. It's like you have got to stay away. Oh, I'm just going to, I'm just going to not even say anything. I'm just going to walk by her office. Oh, I'm just going to shake her hand. See, your mind starts, what can I get away with? What can I do? How far can I go? No, 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 far from her. Far from her house. Wherever she is, and that's the temptation, whether she's inviting it or not, you know you. Far from it. Amen. Not, a lot of, not so many amens on you. Let's keep on moving. Proverbs 7.25 says, Do not let your heart turn aside to her ways. Do not stray into her paths. Stray into her paths. That sounds like, oh, dum to doom And it can be if you're not intentional about it. Get away. For she has cast down many wounded, and all who were slain by her, listen, all who were slain by her, slain, killed, destroyed. That sounds like somebody's M.O. That's our enemy, right? All who were slain by her were strong men. They were strong men, but they were slain. I don't know if you count yourself as a strong man or not. But in either case, you don't have a chance. You've got to remove your foot far from her. Amen. Her house is the way to hell, descending to the chambers of death. Mm. See, back to that, that proverb, lest you give your honor to others and your years to the cruel one. Do you want to give your honor away? Do you want your life to be stolen and stripped away from you because you've made these terrible choices? No. So of the Spirit. Lest aliens be filled with your wealth and your labors go to the house of a foreigner. So, you give your honor to others, your years to the cruel one, aliens filled with your wealth. Aliens not like aliens, but like people who don't live here. This is my house, Right? And your labors go to the house of a foreigner, and you mourn at last. You mourn at last. There, a time will come. you got to pay the piper. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. Whatever a man sows, that he shall also reap. And you mourn at last. When your flesh and your body are consumed, this is miserable stuff, right? But the Lord is painting a picture, warning us, and say, how I have hated instruction, and my heart despised correction. I have not obeyed the voice of my teachers, nor inclined my ear to those who instructed me. You know what's happening right now? <laughs> right now? What's happening right now? I am instructing you. I'm teaching you. Because the Lord is teaching us through this series and through the totality of his word. It's all over the place, isn't it? He's saying the same thing. It's not, he never says, you know what? Sometimes you can just go and uh, strike up a conversation by the water cooler. You know? No, no, no. See, I have not obeyed the voice of my teachers, nor, incl nor inclined my ear to those who instructed me. I was on the verge of total ruin in the midst of the assembly and congregation. Let me say that again. In the midst of the assembly and congregation. You can be here and still not listen, not pay attention, not give yourself to the instruction, not walk in the Spirit. And what's going to happen? All of this ruin and death and destruction. Don't let it happen to you. This is why we do this thing. God chose the foolishness of preaching to get the message to you. I sing my little songs and do my little dances, right? But I tell you the word. Let's watch this video, and then we'll wrap up. I remember one time I was working at the grocery store, and this was, oh, way back in like 1984, uh, maybe, maybe 85. But I, I was 19, 20 years old, right in there, and I'd given promoted, and I was, I, I didn't often check at the groceries. I was working, but then when they'd get busy, they'd call 
me up to come and help get the lines down and such. And uh, so anyway, I'm checking the groceries and I see this next customer in line is a young lady that's rather cute. Now, I'm a single guy. And sometimes single people use their singleness as an opportunity for the flesh. Well, I'm single. I'm not married. So, you know, I can kind of be a little more loose. But God was teaching me, don't be loose. I don't mean a loose lifestyle. I mean just a little re more relaxed in how you would conduct yourself, right? So anyway, I see her. Well, well, my flesh starts thinking of how I can greet this person. Okay, so uh, I'm checking the girl. Well, anyway, I, I say bye to this person, and I come back, and so here's what I do. My flesh just blurts this out, and I say, hello, gorgeous, you know, <laughs> ringing these groceries up, right? Now, this many years ago, this before, I mean, there's, there's a heightened awareness today, and there should have been a heightened awareness before, okay? And especially with somebody that knows anything about the word, because my life had already been changed. But let me tell you, just because your life's been changed doesn't mean your flesh is dead. You know, the Bible says, he who's with the Lord has crucified the flesh and its passions. In Galatians, it says that. I tell my flesh, flesh, you were crucified with Christ. And my flesh said, no, I wasn't. Flesh, you are dead. No, I'm not. How many of you have flesh to talk to you? Isn't that right? See, but you're supposed to act as if your flesh is dead. Don't listen to dead people. Don't listen to dead people. Isn't that right? Don't listen. That you're dead. Shut up. You're dead, right? And so anyway, anyway, I, didn't, I, I listened to the flesh and the flesh. Hello, gorgeous, you know? And so I'm just doing this and everything and every, and chit chatting. She's saying, oh, you know, how you doing? Whatever, you know. And so anyway, she didn't give very many things. So I bagged him up and I said, hey, have, have a nice evening. And I turn around to go to the next customer and I hear her say, that's it. <laughs> and I turn around and she said, that's it. And I said, what do you mean? She said, you call me gorgeous and then you just say bye. I did not think through this. <laughs> and so, so I said, oh, uh, what do you mean? You know, I, I got a customer over here, we know, waiting. And she said, well, like, you call me gorgeous, and then, like, you just say bye, like, don't you want to get together or something? You want me to come meet you after work? Oh, uh, so now here, here's, here's the flesh and the spirit, right? And I, like she put me on the spot. Like, let me think through this a little bit. Oh, no, no. No, I'm on the spot. Now, why am I on the spot? Because I sowed a seed. Do not be deceived. I'm the one that did it. Is that right? I sowed that seed. And so she said, well, what, what time do you get off? Ten. Ten. She said, okay, I'll be back at 10. So, okay, all right, you know. And I go back to check the groceries, and let me just tell you, inside, anybody know that sick feeling? I mean, I just wanted to throw up. Now, now listen, that, that's my spirit on the inside that's feeling like yucky, like, ah, what, what are we doing here? What, what's going on? This is not who you are. You're, you're a man of God. You've been born again. See, my life had already been rocked by that point. But this flesh, oh, let me tell you, still had ideas. See, while, while I was feeling stick, sick to my stomach, so to speak, because of my born again spirit, my flesh is saying, hey, we haven't been this route in a long time. Isn't that right? You understand what I'm talking about? And so here, here sure enough, here comes closing everything. We close down the store and all my coworkers leave. Everybody, bye, bye. And here she is. <laughs> if we weren't so short on time, I'd tell you what happened in the story. <laughs> 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 I want to be sensitive to you and your time. <laughs> <laughs> That's terrible, huh? <laughs> All right, I'll tell you what happened. So, 
So anyway, now I'm, in, now I'm in no man's land. I mean, I'm in the wrong place now. Everybody's gone, bye-bye. And here I am standing out there. I'm in the parking lot with this gal. And I planted the seed, so I kind of feel responsible. But on the other hand, you know, she's sowing some seeds of her own. Is that right? And so we stand there, and guess what I'm doing? My feet are in the wrong place. But there they stand. And guess what's right on top of my feet? Me. You understand? I am near. I am not far. The Bible says be far. And here I am near. I should have never been there. But I'm near. And there I'm standing there. And guess what? We start talking. And she's talking. And I'm talking. But she's talking. I mean, and I didn't see any honey dripping or anything like that. But let me tell you. Just talking and talking and talking and talking, and the flesh just grows stronger and stronger. And I felt that spirit of lust that the Lord had delivered me. Anybody know that spirit? Anybody? Oh, you just feel that thing so strong. And there you are, and listening to those words. And, and before I knew it, man, I'm kissing this girl. I heard somebody gasp over here. <laughs> I'm really sorry to bust your bubble about me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I did. I, it wasn't the only one I kissed before I got married, either. But I, I'm, I'm kissing this girl. And then, let me tell you what else. Have you ever noticed that kissing requires no hands? You ever notice that? And so in my mind now, my flesh is starting to say, well, just caress a little bit here. Right? Because you know, you know how this plays out? The flesh. Anybody, am I the only one here that understands this? <laughs> Ain't nobody saying amen to nothing. <laughs> and let me tell you, listen, listen, listen. So I, I sowed a seed. My feet are in the wrong place. Instead of being far, I'm near. I stayed too long. I'm listening to words. And here this progression is just pulling me in this, the, the spirits of lust and I'm being pulled in and now I'm over the line here kissing this girl and my mind is thinking about going a little far, edging a little farther, edging a little farther. And thank God that I had been sowing massive amounts of the word of God because I look back and think, man, I could have, I could have given my years to the cruel one. I could have given my reputation away. It doesn't take much, okay? But inside, there was enough of the strength of the harvest of the Spirit inside to just stop. My hands didn't go anywhere to stop and to say, you know what? And I, I didn't have the language that I would use today to be a little bit more uh, wise and eloquent. But the language that I used back then, I'm still young. I mean, 19, 20 years old, okay? But the language I used back then, I just said, hey, you know what? I'm sorry. I'm, I'm a Christian, and this, this, I don't blame you, but this is me, but I, this is just not what I need to be doing. That's not what I need to be doing. And so, and of course, here she is. Well, what do you mean? What do you mean? I said, you know what? I, I said, I just know God has a plan for my life and I need to be going a different direction. And this is, I, I, I'm sorry, I, I just shouldn't be here and I, I shouldn't be doing this. Well, what do you mean? Does this mean that I can't see you anymore? And, you know, here, you know, just to talk, right? Just appealing to my flesh. Well, can't, can't we just, can I see you again? Can we just see, just, just one more maybe time, right? Well, I, I've seen some people go to break off with somebody and they get pregnant because the flesh knows this is the last time. This is the last time. Huh? See? And let me tell you, I, I walked away. And by the way, I told her about Jesus. Now, it's not the best scenario to do it because <laughs> here I am compromising, right? But, it, but, but in, in the eyes of the world, I didn't make a big compromise. To me, I knew I did. In the eyes of the world, you didn't know anything. But to me, yeah, I did. I was, I was already way over the line. That's not who I am anymore. Man, God has made me pure. God is preparing me for marriage. God is preparing me to walk in fidelity 
and faithfulness and loyalty in every conversation, in my thought life, in my words, in my heart. You understand what I'm talking about? And even though I wasn't married, it wouldn't be a, but a few years until I would get married. I knew, but God has done this in me and in the spirit. I'm already there, but my flesh, my flesh is not yet fully with the program. And I need, to, I need to not put myself in those positions. Everybody see what I'm talking about? He who sows to the flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. Had I not been flooding myself with the word and sowing the seeds to the spirit, I would not have had the strength to walk away from that. And who knows? Who knows if today and what the Lord is able to do, who knows if this could be happening? But see, it was the sowing to the spirit. And so I'm, I'm, te I'm giving you an ex explanation of a, a compromise in my life. But I'm also telling you that our, our field inside is sown with mixed seed. We sow the word, but we sow some other stuff too. And the Bible's saying, stop sowing that other stuff. And if you'll sow just the truth of God's word, just flood yourself with the word. Then, oh, let me tell you, it'll save you from corruption Oh, and let me, and, and thank the Lord. I mean, uh, we got so much to talk about, but we're going to close it off right here. I was just telling Jenna, I, said, I love our pastor, our senior pastor, that's Jerry Dearman. And uh, he is uh, just a man of God of the highest order. And we trust him. We trust him. And he speaks the truth to us. And he's vulnerable. And he'll tell you, don't, don't make the mistakes I've made. I appreciate him for that. I say, then walk in the Spirit as you shall not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. For he who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption, but he who sows to the Spirit will of the Spirit reap everlasting life. 